Happy New Week here. It's Lindell with Principal of Java. Uh, continuing our series about bands that I've been associated with. Today, band number three, Fractured Fairy Tales. Um, of all the bands I've been in, this probably has the highest level of musicianship across the board. Um, <clears throat> how the band got started is still a bit of a mystery because the guy who started it or had the idea of it didn't end up in the band. So, uh, Tommy, one day you'll have to tell me how that went. I don't remember the time, but uh, the band was me, Fred, Kelly, and Ed. Um, at the time, we were all doing resale tickets for events and whatnot. Uh, Ed was an acoustic player. Fred was an electric guitar. Kelly was a drummer. And I was the bass player. And uh, interestingly enough, the way it went is if you wrote a song, you had to sing it. So I only wrote four songs out of maybe two sets that we had. But about 22 songs total, I think, is what it came out to. And Ed, the acoustic guy, had about maybe 12, and Fred, the electric guitar player, had about eight, something like that. So, but uh, as far as the style, we were kind of all over the place. I mean, the original stuff, we had some covers from Bowie and um, I can't remember who else. There might have been a Beatles cover there somewhere too, but um, pretty good little project as things, things go. Um, I'll start by talking about the member of the band I probably meshed with the least, and that was Kelly the drummer. I worked for him for, you know, about a little over a year or so. Um, it, he, uh, hothead, drank a lot. Um, yeah, good drummer though. And um, yeah, that's all. We're gonna leave it at that. Okay, continuing with Fraxy Fur Tells. Uh, let's talk about uh, the other. One of the other co-writers, uh, Ed, an acoustic guitar player, uh, for the most part. Um, because of that, he wrote his songs very differently, more folk style, and um, his was more melodic. Um, a lot of chords, a lot of chords that a lot of electric guys just don't. We don't touch. Um, we try to keep it, you know, usually simpler. Um, for electric purposes, and we use uh, effects and different things to add more character to our sound. Uh, when you're an acoustic player, you have to, the sound has to be there from the get go. So <clears throat> there were all kinds of chords we were having to learn to keep up with Ed. Um, and, you know, his pace was very different too. Uh, most of his songs were slower. Um, he's not going to really rock out on an acoustic guitar. Some do, but most, for the most part, that's not the case. Um, he was when I got along. Probably uh, he was. He'd be the one that come by the house just randomly, just show up and say, "Hey, what are you doing?" And um, probably because we were the only two in the band, didn't have girlfriends at the time. So, um, but yeah, me and Ed got along very well. I, I'd drop by his house sometimes unexpectedly too, just say, "Hey, what's going on?" and we. Go and grab go grab a bite somewhere, grab a beer or whatever. Um, you know, Ed was kind of a long ponytail hippie type guy, um, very off the grid kind of individual. Um, but you know, he um, is one of the few people I've, I've crossed paths with. I kind of wonder where he's at now. There are certain people that you you pass you cross paths with that are kind of forgettable. But after you move past it, be like, yeah, don't need to see that guy again. Um, and I'd like to kind of know what happened to him. So, um, yep. Which brings us to Fred, or Frederick, so that we can keep the two names from confusing. Uh, he was the first person out of the group I met. I actually uh, auditioned for him for a band he was putting together. Um, shock opera back in the day and he needed a singer <clears throat> and I you know 
went and talked to him. Never heard of Shock Hopper. We sat around a little bit and talked and whatnot. And uh, I kept in touch um, with Fred because Fred, there was something about Fred that just was like I said. I think I need to keep up with this guy and this kind of. Um, he was interesting. And, you know, again, sometimes, you know, when you meet people, you, you meet people, not everyone's interesting. Uh, Fred was interesting. So uh, he had traveled quite a bit. He was a you know, college grad, I was not. Um, but we could still, you know, talk at a fairly high level about music and other things. Um, so, you know, Fred is the only one out of the group I still keep in touch with to some extent. Um, he's moved on and now has a you know house full of kids and you know living a, a fairly unrock and roll kind of lifestyle at the moment. But that's what happens to many of us. We just kind of you know life changes and we gotta change with it. So Fred was more as an electric guitar player and his stuff was more straight ahead rock and roll kind of thing. So I remember he complained actually at one point because, you know, I and Ed were writing too many slow songs. He wanted to write a slow song, so dog on it, so he could um, quit having to, you know, do all the upbeat stuff, <clears throat> you know, so the band would be well-rounded. So, you know, we had to work on that. But, you know, again, this was, you know, a band that had a high level of musicianship from the ground up you know i was the weak one of the bunch being the least experienced but this was you know again after i had gotten my intense you know 12 months plus lesson from um mr eugene and was a lot more ready um for this kind of thing it was a, it was a great growth experience for me and it allowed me to really stretch out my wings and get in there uh, and there was, you know, knowing how to play your instrument is one thing. Knowing how to play with a group is a different dynamic altogether. You, um, especially with the drummer. Now, I had learned, you know, all the intricacies, not all, several, most of the intricacies between guitar and bass and how those two bounce off each other by, you know, learning uh, how these two instruments are, are cohesive but I had to work with a drummer and it's very important for a bass player to know how to work with a drummer because y'all are the rhythm section and you need to know how to sync up with the drums because um, the bass player which I found out you know through um, some very pointed comments aimed at me uh, can throw the drummer off uh, if I'm not in sync with what he's doing or if I'm not consistent about what I'm doing you know I play it one way this time I play it a different way next time and he's like no you can't do that man you gotta, <laughs> you, gotta you gotta find a path and walk it so I can walk with you so again this is just part of you know the whole band experience you do have to uh figure out how to work with in a group or a musical family of sorts uh, in a way that's cohesive and consistent um, to produce good music and uh, actually as a band um, there were times where it was it was so tight it was scary you know you play a song and it would hit all the right spots and land exactly where it needed to land when it needed to land there. And we could stop on a dime. And, you know, from this, from that day until this one, some of the practices we had were some of the tightest I've, I mean, that I've ever had. And that, you know, you'd figure as I'd, I'd progress further, that would be, be more the case, but it, no, uh, it really wasn't. <clears throat> It wasn't at all. So, but yeah, that's that's fractured fairy tales. Um, we only played about four or five gigs over the course of our time together, um, as with many bands. Um, 
Fred was uh, having a baby. Uh, recently married, so, you know, his family life became uh, more pivotal at that particular point in his life than the band was. He'd been in several bands, it's like, but a first baby, you know, that trumps band. <laughs> it just, it just does. So, I couldn't blame him for that, you know. I remember Kelly was kind of, kind of annoyed by the whole process that, because he really wanted to, he really saw this band in particular uh, moving on <clears throat> and doing something and making some real noise. Um, he was enamored at that time with a, a band called, um, oh dear, um, I can't, um, some guys out of Atlanta, I'm, I've got the band, I can't think of who they are right now, but he heard that sound and we were emulating <clears throat> we had some of those qualities in our band and uh, he was like yeah we could we could make a good run at this thing and uh, you know boop, there goes a guitar player and a third of our tracks and so for a while we tried to go with just an acoustic set um, acoustic guitar player bass and drums and it just didn't have that same pop it didn't have that that same energy um, it wasn't a bad band, it just, it was just not a high energy, um, it's a very different band without, a, without an electric guitar player in it, very, very different, um, and we just, nobody really felt it. I mean, Ed, the, the guy who wrote most of the songs, he was like, oh, this is great, but for the rest of us, it's like, yeah, I don't really see this being more than just a project band and, you know, so be it. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks again for, for listening to the and uh, allow me to tell my stories. Uh, that's all I got for now. Until next time.